sponsored by Raycon. If you're a Captain America fan, then you might remember the aircraft that Red Skull used to escape the hero. Well, today we'll talk all about it, because that's right, this thing was almost built. Tailsitter Designs was something tried over and over again throughout the history by both Americans, Soviets, even the French, but of course it was the Germans that would try this concept first. And it was none other than the legendary Focke Wolf Bureau who tried to build a working Tailsitter aircraft back in World War II. Jump aboard and get ready to take off without a runway with the Focke Wolf Tree Fliegel. The idea behind Tailsitter aircraft is credited to none other than Nikola Tesla. He actually patented the design in 1920, but never got around to seeing his concept materialized. But in 1944, the Nazis decided to have a go. You see, Nazi Germany wasn't in a good position. With the D-Day on the Western Front and the Soviets pushing hard on the East, the end was inevitable and they needed a miracle to win or at least stop one side and consolidate their troops on the other front. This led to the birth of some pretty imaginative projects, some of which we've covered and some that we'll be covering in the future, but this one was very distinct and weird. Focke Wolf funded internally a new interceptor aircraft project that was to be made of cheap materials, used cheap fuel like hydrogen and could be mass produced to defend strategic areas or factories which had no runways nearby in a bid to save the German industry and turn the tide of war. Driving one of these bad boys would have been incredible, especially if I could jam out to one of my favorite tunes whilst doing so, but I couldn't actually find any details about their onboard sound systems. But Nick, I hear you say, what would be the solution? Well, I would just pick up some Raycon Everyday Buds, who is today's video sponsor. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. With optimized gel tips for perfect in-air fit, these earbuds are so comfortable that they will not budge, no matter how many loop-de-loops or rough terrain I drive over. They offer 8 hours of playtime and have a 32-hour battery life, perfect for even the most long-haul flights that you can imagine. And better yet, Raycons are priced just right. You get quality audio at half the price than other premium audio brands, and they have 48,000 five-star reviews to prove it. The animations I make are expensive to do, and it's sponsors like Raycon that make these videos possible. So that's why I do ask you, if you're watching today and you need some earbuds, or perhaps you're going to buy them for a friend, then click on the link down below. Because not only are you getting an excellent product, you're also supporting the channel so I can make many more videos just like this one. And who knows, maybe they'll come back and sponsor us again, which would be absolutely fantastic. So click on the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash found and explained to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Back to the show. The Tree Fliegel was a completely new design, one that threw away any previous aircraft design philosophy and went wild with the forces of gravity. The aircraft was to be VTOL capable, powered by two different propulsion groups. The main one was made out of three ramjet engines mounted on the tip of the propeller like wings below the cockpit. But ramjets are actually a terrible choice for a VTOL aircraft as they can't move anything from standstill. Ramjets only provide propulsion whilst they're flying in flight because of the air entering the nozzle by the forward motion. They don't do anything when they're just sitting on the tarmac. So the other type of engine on board would be a rocket, 
jet or a propeller engine that would be used to simply give the aircraft enough power to lift off so that the ramjets could be activated. In flight, the ring, which the propeller blade like wings with engines were mounted on, would rotate and basically a large propeller would then push the aircraft upwards and then forwards. That's right, the wings themselves would actually become the propeller. The aft section was made out of four tailplanes fitted with a steering surface in the role of both ailerons and rudders. Very similar to the Convair Pogo and the Sakhoi Shukval, which you can check out on the channel. Each of the tail stabilizers had a small landing gear and the main one was located in the center. It was to carry the weight of the aircraft with the others to provide stability when landing. But how would the pilot actually steer this thing? After the takeoff, the engines used to provide initial power would be turned off and the large spinning propeller with the ramjets would then push the aircraft upwards to a certain altitude, where the pilot would slowly pitch the aircraft forward before getting into a horizontal position. From there, it's easy, right? Well, to put it simply, it's not. The pilot would have to fly with the nose pitched slightly upwards to provide lift and because remember there are no wings and that's why the weaponry was actually mounted pitched slightly downwards. So it would be pretty much doing a wheelie in the sky. On the topic of the weaponry, since it was made to be an interceptor, it would presumably have to fight against allied bombers and other large targets. It would carry two 30mm and two 20mm guns, and that would be some serious firepower for an interceptor. There was no need for other smaller calibre cannons or machine guns against fighters because it was essentially a flying brick. Although a pretty fast one because during wind tunnel testings the Germans deduced that speeds around Mach 0.9 could be achieved. Which is frankly ludicrous. Whilst it sounded a bit like a mess, all of this so far was rather viable and the project continued forward. That is, until they started to look at the landings. Unlike the future tail sitter designs, this one wouldn't have a rotating seat for the pilot to be able to look over his shoulder when he came into land. This would mean that the pilot would be facing upwards during both takeoff and landing and his visibility would be extremely bad, especially with that ramjet powered propeller thing spinning like crazy right behind him. But this was still enough for the project to reach those wind tunnel tests. What happened next? Another thing that we said in this video is the project was funded internally by Focke Wolf, meaning the Luftwaffe didn't even have plans or requirements set for this aircraft, and even if Focke Wolf presented it, there's a high chance that they would have rejected it immediately. Because of the overcomplicated design and the need for new training programs for the pilots of this insane aircraft. And would you really want to risk those few skilled pilots that you had left on an experimental death trap machine? Perhaps not. And there you have it. In an alternative reality, Hydra got the plans for this and would actually build this aircraft for Red Skull. So if anybody watching right now knows somebody at Disney or Marvel and they need some help with their 3D animations, tell them to give me a call. Thanks for watching and please do subscribe for more interesting videos and if you want to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description below. And as the Germans would say, Auf Wiedersehen. Trieb Fliegel. Trieb Fliegel. Trieb Fliegel. Focke auf Trieb Fliegel. <laughs>